The antidote. 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 You're listening to the antidote with Dave Hawkins. With Christian music that doesn't suck. We'll be right back. 
You heard that artist last week on The Antidote. This time around, Captive Portal changed up his sound on Choir Librarian with that jazz funk vibe. Captive Portal is just one of the artists that's found on the Zap record label, which is based in Scotland. This is the second part of The Antidote's look into the music found on that label. Last week's show had the first part of our talk with label founder Dave Emerson about those artists. And we're going to continue on with that conversation with Dave just a bit later in the show. I realized that uh, some of this may be a stretch for some listeners, both in music style and language. And no, no, it's not bad language. It's just that several of the songs you'll hear are recorded in Afrikaans. I mentioned last week about the range of music styles found on Zap Records. And here's a band that knows all about making music with young kids at home. That's where parental petulance is coming from on the song Dinos in the Dishwasher. This is Norel Kay, and you're listening to The Antidote with Dave Hawkins. And you've got dirt under your nails, and I know you speak patient with me and you're down here whispering abide in me abide in me Dirt on your white robe And I'm just not sure how You wanna be down here Next to me Get close to me He said Get close to me You tore the veil You 
broke down the wall You let me into your garden I hear your beckoning call Turn on both your cheeks And there's tears in your eyes And you're singing Stay close to me Stay close to me Down the wall You let me into your garden And it's my name you call Another of the artists found on Zap. That was Narelle K. with The Gardener. Last week, I aired part of my conversation with South Africa's Willem Samuel of Screalian. Here's more as Willem speaks about his music. You brought up about the aspect of your faith, and I think that's probably what's confusing about your music, is that you are a Christian. And I usually find that faith comes through in an artist's work in some form or another. But that doesn't happen with Scree, Aline. Are you wanting a disconnect between the two in your music? Um, I think the, the one thing is that the music was written a long time ago, not as a Christian specifically, yet I wouldn't say that the songs that I've released now are without Christian context. My favorite song on the album is called Brandkerfader, which means like burn Father Christmas. It might come across as even sacrilegious, but and I never thought of that song that way until I quite recently sort of reworked it. Um, and it, it's a quite a strong attack on consumerism. Exactly. Um, which I like and how, how this thing has been hijacked. And you know, me and my partner, we were we were always in Christmas with the family, quite sort of horrified how kids would be like, hey, if you behave, you know, you're going to get presents, and if you don't behave, you're not going to get presents. And we're like, you know, this is just confuses the whole thing about grace, you know, like teaching children about like, you know, you, you get good things whether you deserve them or not. I don't know. It doesn't seem like a good system. Anyway, we're just like, I don't know if we're going to teach our kids like, you know, that one day. And then... The second song, which is X Macy, which is like a whole medley, it's like about a seven minute song. I just I just took all these little segments that I wrote at, at like the first girl that broke up with me, like I just wrote like six different songs and I put it all together. And even there there's quite a lot a lot of, you know, praying for you but it didn't happen and I mean the the lyrics are still cynical. And what I like about um Diri Karua is that in the end like there's even an angel so it's it's always been something that's even I think even before I would say I became a Christian I, like religion and thinking about God and things was still prevalent in my work. Um, for years, I used my creativity specifically for a Christian audience, and I found that to be challenging because um, immediately I started thinking about my work. I started censoring it in a way. And it was kind of an unfair thing for me to expect me to paint or to do comics and things and for fellow believers to like support me in that. Like it, it felt to me like it was like my art and my music wasn't specifically for Christians. Um, not that it's not for Christians. Like there was years where I just really overanalyzed what messaging things would be and like, you know, what kind of message I'm sending about the message and things like that. But for me at the moment, it's more about creating and making something. And then it is what it is. So sometimes you'd write something and whatever, and it, it would be very religious. 
or, and then sometimes not at all. And then sometimes even sacrilegious or sometimes sarcastic, sometimes angry or whatever. But I don't want to not make a song or not write a lyric or not paint something because I'm kind of second guessing myself. And also just allowing it to be wrong or to make mistakes or for it to be um, something different or even something that I might even personally disagree with or whatever. Explain more about the music and your art. Do you find that there's a strong relationship between the two? Um, the way that you make music and the way that you make art is, is very different. So it comes from different places. Like a song or a lyric, I always find is something that's quite spontaneous. You know, you're either writing a lyric or something comes up in your head and you're like, oh my goodness, like, and you write it down and, and within like 15 minutes, you've got the song. You've okay, now you kind of have to remember it. So you either record it on your phone or you, you keep practicing this line and you work it and whatever. And then whatever that idea was to in the end capture it and, and to sort of present it. Um, 
while with art i feel it's it's almost the other way around it's like you're really not sure what you have until right at the end so that it's kind of process that comes from very different sides i think comics in a way was was something that sort of got me into the idea of like of being sort of more multifaceted you know a comic book would you know you would write and then you would draw it and then you would sort of you know be like a director almost like directing a movie and the different angles so there would be like actually a sense of sort of cinematography involved mm-hmm. doing takes and graphic design and story writing and then then i mean when i published my book i was like geez i'm, I'm actually an author in a way you know it's like i never thought of myself as a literary person um using all of these different things and then to make one thing so the idea for me to then think like well what if i put music on top of this sort of came quite naturally because writing was already involved so i was like well if i've got all these lyrics i've already got the words um so what if i put music like what's going to happen with the art and how i draw so and that's what i've been working on for the last year or two and it's it's been very challenging but very exciting you know, you would work on a song and then later you would sit down and you would draw like a little animation or some, some ideas or come up with characters and things like that. And then that would influence the lyrics and then you would go back and record like a different set of lyrics and so on and so forth. Um, at the moment, what's been working best for me in terms of like just getting things finished and not always tinkering with it has been to exhibit. So I'm also not 100% sure which is the best place to show this music or how to present it because um, I've been playing live and i've been playing with the guitar and stuff here around in cape town um but i've then also had an exhibition where i presented the video with the comic books and things like that um so it's just a lot of fun mixing it up and seeing what comes out and i kind of really like the idea and it's also sort of why i picked the name skrialian in a way it's also a pseudonym just sort of a, a, a bit of a front, just something that I can sort of separate myself from from the things that I'm doing. And I'm, I kind of like that idea of being a bit more elusive. I, I don't know, maybe it's my anti-consumerism being a bit more elusive and, and not so understandable in a way. So I kind of like the idea that I sometimes exhibit and then people think I played live or I played live and then people think, oh, did you do an exhibition or is, are you a comic artist? Is it, I, I kind of like the idea that, that Skrillian isn't something it's like, oh, it's this or it's that. The challenge is for me now, like, is that the music, the lyrics and the art are on the same standard so that it's, it's not like the one is obviously weaker than the other. So that's something that's, that's been challenging, you know, making sure you spend as much time honing your drawing skills as you do with your recording skills and your vocal training and, you know, my bass playing or guitar playing and all that. It's keeping all these things going has been... Uh, has been challenging, um, but uh, you know I'm very happy with what's coming out. Earlier on, you'd mentioned about the other translation of the name, Scream Alone, and hopefully it won't be Screaming Alone, because I guess rumor has it that you have plans for a new release coming out in the spring. Yeah, so um, next year there's a big festival, and sort of they've given me a big exhibition room. So I'm going to do like live shows as well as an exhibition with paintings and with videos and things like that. Because the songs that I've released now was part of a bigger collection. So I've recorded, I think, about 12 tracks. I put out these three first. And so I've got like another six or seven, which I'm really working hard on to release next year. And that also with videos and things like that. I'm working on the videos at the moment. Um, not all of them are animated, like the other one I just finished. You know, we shot in London, you yeah, with a camera. <laughs> so, <laughs> again, it's me doing something and being like, okay, I've done that, like moving on to the next thing. Um, but Skrialian has given me a very nice, comfortable sort of, um, I guess, concept or context to work in and to create. The aesthetic that I'm working with is helping me to sort of hone this into a specific direction all sort of encapsulated by this you know by this thing uh we'll see (laughs) well well i'm going to be looking forward to anything and everything that you bring out thanks for coming to the antidote i really appreciate this talk really it's uh it's nice to talk to some people about my work and some to some christians as well it's it's actually been a while and i find refreshing to remind myself of like the things that motivated me and like sort of got me started along this track you know so it's been good for me to chat to you man i appreciate it 
Dit stroom oor my wang Dier die glas Al wat doop is Van my vel A sonstral My vang Three aliens hyenas came from a zap records compilation titled friends volume two and my talk with dave emerson of zap records returns after the noise rock of isf with kill it
your chairs. I want you to get up right now and go to the window, open it, and stick your head out and yell, I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore! There's one common theme found with several of the artists on Zap. Some of the music is coming from a Christian perspective. Is that intentional? Um, I'd say it isn't. It isn't. Um, I guess what I would say is that Zap Records isn't a Christian record label in the sense it's not evangelistic. You know, we're, we're not looking to necessarily um, forward a specific message or necessarily evangelize people. Um, but obviously because I'm a Christian, um, I share things in common with other Christians. And so, you know, a lot of the people that I'm friends with are also Christians. Um, and so then obviously, you know, their music would also tend to have, you know, a message about their faith and about God. So, you know, I'm intentionally helping my friends who are Christians to release music. Um, but it's not our intention as a label or as an organization to only release Christian music or to only sign Christian artists, you know, um, there are a number of guys on, on Zap Records who are not Christians and who are aware of the fact that I am a Christian and that other bands on the label are Christians. Um, and they're more than happy with that. And, um, they're more than happy to, you know, be part of what I like to call the Zap family. There's no favoritism in that sense. I'm not seeking to only promote Christians and Christianity, you know? I love the stuff from one Zap artist who's really out there because we did talk about some of this being on the fringe. Osper Shire and his spoken word release versus and Anhedonia. What can you tell us about him? Curtis is a great guy. Um, I've been friends with Curtis for many years and um, I'm, I actually met him at Cornerstone 2012. I was fortunate enough to be able to get to that final Cornerstone um, which had been a dream of mine for a long time. So I'm, I'm still really thankful for that. Um, and I made lots of friends at Cornerstone and Curtis was one of those people that I met. And um, he's just an incredibly creative person. He writes short stories. He writes poetry. Um, you know, he plays several different musical instruments. Uh, you know, he's, he's definitely one of those kind of all round creative types. And um, he'd been quite involved with some of the earlier Zap releases, kind of helping me to kind of write press release statements and things like that, because he's good with words. Um, and he'd always been like really kind of into everything that I was doing with Zap and, and a big encourager to me. So um, I'd always had a desire to, to help him to release something. But he's one of those creatives that is also quite self-critical and kind of underconfident, maybe, if you like. Um, so it took me a while to kind of persuade him to, to release something with us, but I'm glad that I did. Incomplete specters haunts the subconscious mind, stealing remnants of pure joy, raising foundations, raising infernal kingdoms, with destruction like Deimos. Send forth the sabers, call forth the cannon fire to vanquish all these vices, an internal fray, a cerebral exorcism, quelling and dispelling fear.
I can feel liberation emitting from my marrow as it secretes through my pores, eroding all chains that grapple my helpless body. Such a bizarre mutation, awakening my radical nuclei as my cells scream, Vindication! Vindication! This soul shall be released. No bondage will prosper. I am a victim no more. Sure, it's odd, it's different, but I love it. A pair of songs, Incomplete Spectres and Osteopathic Mutation from Ospreyshire. And here's some more talk about another Zap artist whose name, <laughs> at least for me, it's unpronounceable. Pulling out another Zap artist that's uh, maybe a little bit less on the fringe is this acoustic punk release. And it's got the title Post Bolin Pre Peruvian Plas Punk. <laughs> you have to explain Plas, that. Plas Punk. Uh, <laughs> sorry, that was me correcting your Afrikaans. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. It's all right. <laughs> Yeah, um, my pronunciation of Afrikaans isn't great, but Method and Technique is the artist's name. Where are they coming from with this music? It's unusual. It is. Um, I think it's one of the most punk rock things I've ever heard, as far as I'm concerned. Like, Willem Samuel, who is also um, Skrielian, um, he told me about Joe and the music that Joe was making. He was like, man you got to check this out. It's so good. Um, so, you know, Method and Technique is one of those classic examples of how someone that was on Zap kind of introduced me to a friend of theirs, uh, and we ended up releasing their music as well. Um, where is it coming from? I, I, I don't know. His mind is obviously an incredible place. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it just has all the classic earmarks of just punk rock. You know, it's like, it's it's the best parts of, like, early no effects. It's got stuff that reminds me of, like, hardcore punk like bad brains even um it's just one man with his guitar kind of screaming at the world and i just i love it <laughs> <laughs> Dit is die lied van die oorbouw 
good but what's the worst on that? I want it for money if you think it's so scorning after me So bend it, bend it, bend So bloody stop it for this evil so it's here already I'm fucked here, come box it, throw my dead No power to trust on his life, it's just dead Full of those that fill up my dead Dead, there's enough fun, now I'm getting Hurt more than boy, I'm skating But he's feel the spill the hot minute us Live as for dawn How the fuck I'll be my passing Death and his team is like a Sit to me till I fell his gallon state Go down the gallon state Don't call my cause a night Let me look like I might have battled my eye To a lot my net there Look at me now Death is in a bar on Svalon Gebring uit vijf zijf stelsel Achter en ik klein palei van Johannes Dahl Van die zwak hoog en klein Die fabriek is die van het tijd zo zien Statische zijs gymnastiek Gestrekt is die vlak voor op wat ruik plak Time to go straw wat nou gemak is nou Die wat liever slijpt, wij door de loze strijd Nou dan, die aardig is de kop, zij zijn zij En die wat vrees voor die golden touch op Met al land al dit besluit Zij voor die manager op, we zijn maar ook Als kip gesnijd Jij nog een deel geeft ons, zij met de match Het gemorst ons zak Waar gevel die kampioens, maar voor die woord weg Voor lawyers, voor die kijk als ik leeuw aan de staf weg Jij neemt dat voor aan de kant weg Bleh! Zijn wij juist klaar met gevallen zelfbevredig Naast jij die voorheen had zal je zien Maar dat is je malenlaar En die voorheen is een zeil Nee, die dorp van die momenten Wat we hebben gewaar in groot vrees Noms rot is kuit voor die naweer Zonder dit lip jij veranderd Ik ga naar val Kom van Zip maar zo Okay, so then if the music you like is weird or eclectic, how eclectic is Dave Emerson himself? I think I'm pretty non-eclectic, actually. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I go through these kind of phases where I listen to a lot of a specific kind of subgenre of punk. So I'll go through a phase when I'm listening to like loads of kind of mid-80s American hardcore punk um, and then I'll go through a phase of listening to like loads of really British kind of noise punk, like um, sounding like Discharge and stuff like that. And then I'll probably go through a phase of listening to loads of um, kind of scar punk stuff. So, but it's generally kind of around the punk flag, if you like. So I don't, I don't think I'm really that eclectic. I think a lot of people would think that my record collection was really boring. <laughs> <laughs> You sound like a friend of mine who will just overdose on a certain band or style and then not yeah. even touch it for two years. Yeah, it's kind of like that. There's something that you haven't admitted yet, is that you also help out by adding your vocals on some of the releases, like Dystopian Futures. Yeah. Um, Running Zap Records obviously puts me in a, a privileged position of being able to release my own music as well. Um, without too much hassle. So I, I take that opportunity shamelessly. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I had the, the privilege of being able to help out with the last couple of old timers releases 
before we went on hiatus. Um, Dave Aaron was gracious enough to let me do a co-release with him on those two releases. And um, yeah, Dystopian Futures is my, my kind of current project that I'm working on. And yeah, Zap Records makes it real nice and easy for me to be able to get my music out there. <laughs> <laughs> you do sort of have the inside track. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> like I said, I'm shamelessly taking it. <laughs> I can't catch my breath! I need to take a breath! There he is, the shamelessly self-serving Dave Emerson on Fear from Dystopian Futures. And let's hear more from Dave as we finish this talk. The funny thing about you is creating a label, because I can't imagine any record label being a moneymaker anymore. 
you know, especially one covering niche markets. It leaves me wondering why you're doing this. Yeah, um, there definitely isn't any money in it. I'm not doing it for the money. Um, that's one of the things about Zap Records that maybe attracts people to us is that um, I don't take a cut. I do what I do for the love of it. Um, and I think really that my main motivation behind that is that as much as I said earlier that Zap Records isn't a Christian label uh, and we're not necessarily setting out to release Christian music or evangelize people, I do see my involvement with Zap Records as service to God. You know, um, I mean, you could use the word ministry if you wanted to. Um, I feel like this is my opportunity to show the practical love of God to other people, you know? So that's what I get out of it. You know, I don't take a cut, but I get the sense of um, being able to help people, you know, being able to love people like Christ loved people um, and being able to be helpful to others and hopefully encourage them. That's just from the heart, you know, that's how I feel about it. You know, I believe that as people hear these bands um, and they hear the message, I mean, some of the Zap bands are pretty strongly Christian in their lyrical content. Um, and I believe that as people hear that, it will have an impact. That those, those seeds that are sown are not going to go to waste. Absolutely. What about the future of Zap Records? Have you got any more surprising releases coming up that you can share about? Um, you know, right now the canvas is pretty blank. Um, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of things in the pipeline for 2018. A lot of the bands that are on Zap right now are working on follow-up releases. Um, and most of them have been cool enough to decide that they'll stick around with Zap, which is nice. Um, it's not always what I would anticipate, but hey, it's, I, I'm really thankful for it. Um, so yeah, some follow-up releases, but I don't want to say any names because secrecy clauses in these things, you know? Um, <laughs> there, there is a there is a new release on its way um, from Dystopian Features, um, which features the two songs I've already helped them release, um, plus a, a brand new track, um, and it's on a cassette tape, so that's nice. Um, we did a co-release with DBD Tapes in uh, Chicago, which is um, Zach from um, October Bird of Death. He's the drummer for them. He drums for Two Minute Minor as well. Um, so yeah, he, he's done a co-release of a tape for dystopian futures which is cool um and then look into the new year there's no dates set firmly at this point in time um but there are some really good releases in the pipeline that i'm really excited about um hopefully a split release that might or might not be uh, ice hockey related uh, next year so there is one that i can kind of let you in on um there's a hardcore punk band from hamburg in germany called praiser who some people may or may not know. Praiser's been on this show before. Oh, there you go. They've been around for years. They're absolutely solid. They put something out every single year without fail. Um, so they have a huge back catalog. And um, Zap Records is really, really excited to be working with them on a sort of a best of, which will be out within the first couple of months of 2018. And I want people to be excited. There's, there is good stuff. I just can't say anything yet. <laughs> Let me just say this. 2018 is going to be a great year for, for Zap Records. Let's put it that way. Dave, this has been really cool having a chance to talk. Thanks for coming yeah. and best of luck with Zap. Thanks very much, Dave. I've really enjoyed chatting to you. And that's it for my conversations with Screealian and Zap Records. There's a lot of great and unusual music from this label. Check it out on Zap's Bandcamp page. It may seem a little odd to go from featuring one record label this week to featuring another on the next episode of The Antidote, but there's good reason. Thumper Punk Records announced last week that after a long run, they're going to close up. This label has been a huge influence in the Christian punk scene, and they need a send-off. Next week, you'll hear a ton of great music from this punk label and thoughts from a number of the label artists. On the final part of our talk, Dave Emerson spoke about the huge Praiser release that just came out, and there's a little taste of it to go along with the tracks You Still Hate and Blessed Be the Punk. See you again next week. Well, 
Marcus Bender from Fraser and you're listening to The Antidote with Dave Hawkins. Let's be the 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 the